Hi there, namaste, and welcome to another spiritualistic pick a card reading. I'm so grateful that you're here, and as always, I'm sending you all my love, light, and gratitude from my little universe to your little universe. <laughs> Lots of big hugs and kisses. Today, I'm channeling a message to you from the dragons. As you know, I have channeled like the golden dragons of Mel Deck. We've had dragons come out as guides and supports in other readings that I've given. This one is just dragons. In every realm, every element, every culture, we are pulling messages from the dragons that are around you, whether or not you are aware that they're there. So, <laughs> please take a deep breath, drawing the inhale up your spine, creating a clear and open channel. And as you exhale, allow yourself to come into clear knowing which group or groups has your message in it for you today. We have group number one on the left with cleanse your energy. We have group number two in the center with cellular healing. We have group number three on the right with astrological transits. Oh, and group number one, I forgot to mention the crystals. We also have this raw emerald for group one. For group two, we have this raw apophyllite crystal. And for group number three, we have this celestite geode. As always, your timestamps are listed below in the description box, as well as information for joining my Patreon, finding my join channel, um, my inner circle, the little membership situation here on YouTube if you want to check that out. I post pick a card readings there every Wednesday and on Patreon every single Thursday, so you can sign up there for more exclusive content. It's $5 a month, super cheap, and it's lots of fun. I love the communities. Also, if you're interested in personal readings or energy sessions, any of the jewelry that I make out of these raw crystals that I acquire, <laughs> much like our dragon friends, <laughs> um, you can find that as well in the description box. Those are all going to be on my Etsy shop if you want to take a look over there. And yeah, I'm just so grateful that you guys are here. I'm sending you so much love, light, and gratitude. And that's it out of me for the intro. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and see you at your reading. Thank you for being here and namaste. Hi there group one, namaste and welcome to your reading. Today I'm channeling a message to you from the beautiful loving dragon guides that are around you regardless of what type of dragons that they are. Of course, the light and loved ones. <laughs> you selected the first group with the yellow cleanse your energy card and I heard someone say, <clears throat> that's gold. <laughs> beautiful. And this raw emerald crystal. I'm hearing this song magic by B.O.B do you guys remember that song i got the magic in me every time i touch that track it turns into gold gold <laughs> so now this is interesting with the cleanse your energy card this is actually indicating the fact that you are becoming a lot more sensitive when it comes to your spiritual and psychic abilities some of you are very empathic or hsps highly sensitive people persons and this is also an indication that with cleanse your energy, I'm not really so much getting the vibe with the emerald here, that there is something that is within you that needs to be released. Remi remember that your mind creates your reality on this one, but the dragons want you to know that first and foremost with this golden color, you are being asked to create more space in your energy field and actually electrify it a little bit more. Now, this is not to say to take more action, although this might synchronistically fall under this blanket if it feels natural to your energy but the focus here is actually to allow your energy to permeate a little bit stronger as you become a little bit more sensitive and you pick up on more things around you this is a magnetizational setting there are also spiritual and psychic gifts that are electric such as astral traveling or journeying <laughs> sending out energy healing but with these comes higher higher levels of awareness in your perception, which is magnetic. And so when this happens, you might notice that you feel a little bit more sensitive towards your surroundings, not maybe even in a bad way, but where you might have a threshold where you're able to understand, oh, this is mine and this is not. You might notice that that threshold is getting a little bit closer to you where you're actually picking up more about what's around you right now. So with the Cleanse Your Energy card, you're being asked to, yes, find your center, find your core, your energetic sovereignty, and that direct pipeline to source. And your dragons right now are creating spheres of crystalline light and golden light around you so that they can help you to 
hold and create that energy bubble, that aura, that protective energy around you so that as you strengthen, as you become aware, and as you actually set this in place for yourself, you are able to kind of have, um, you're able to kind of have a guide, have a feeling of what that is. They're kind of showing me in dance, for example, or perhaps in yoga, when you wanted to find a perfect position, you would oftentimes be guided gently by the instructor. For example, maybe I thought I was standing up straight perfectly and maybe I was leaning just a smidge to the right. So my instructor would come and just gently nudge me to the center and it might feel a little bit off for me because it is, it's moving it to the left. But that doesn't mean that that's not center because the instructor has an external perspective. So that gentle guidance on your aura, when it comes to allowing yourself to kind of pop your energy out there a little bit, strengthen it, solidify it there, and create kind of a stronger and more neutralized, normalized foundation and base for your energy field. This is why they are around you right now. They're always around you, but right now they are kind of allowing you to explore what is within your energy field, and they're kind of helping you um, like hold the strength. They're also showing me whenever I would do like a développé, um, hold my leg out in front of me. Um, my teacher might sometimes lift my leg up an extra inch because maybe I wasn't strong enough to hold it there by myself to lug my leg up, but they would gently guide it up an extra inch or two and then slowly remove their hand and maybe I'd shake a little bit, but I would be able to honor my flexibility and try to strengthen it there. So that's essentially energetically what the dragons are helping you do with your aura at this time. This emerald indicates that you are going to be understanding or coming back around to some perhaps arcane or ancient or special information. Um, this can be something that's very individualized, such as your own soul's journey, past, present, future, parallel lifetimes. This can be something like different realms. This can be something like getting into archaeology or ancient cultures or even coming back around to the things that you've known before, but allowing it to interact with this stronger version of your energy field is going to give you a different perspective, kind of like the ones the dragons have with you. From an individualized perspective, you, you have your perspective and the dragons have their perspective, yet we are all a part of one larger being. And so we are, by definition, the universe experiencing itself source, God, light, experiencing itself. And so that external perspective can also kind of help us to maybe reapproach the same thing, but find that different perspective. Kind of take your leg and lift it up a little bit. Yes, this is your flexibility. You know, your hamstring might shake a little bit, but if you, if you never try, you never know, right? <laughs> so the dragons want to come through and let you know that you are expanding right now. And so if you feel like you need a little bit of rest or you feel like you are needing to put a little bit more energy out there, this is, they're kind of both true. There's this energy of strengthening. And so when you strengthen, it's not always actually going for the, the heaviest weights that's going to strengthen you. That might be what bulks you, but that won't necessarily be what strengthens you. Sometimes it is those micro movements. Sometimes it's that spinal isolation that really strengthens your core. It's independent. It's individual for all of you, but... With your energy here, it might not be popping yourself in the middle of um, Universal Studios. That is what will just help you get over this once and for all. For some of you, it might be. But for the majority of you, this is going to be just honoring these new sensations as you move about your life. Gently. Gently, of course. Messages, please, to group number one from the dragon. Was that the star card? Oh, the fool. I saw it at the back of the deck. Interesting. There's something here about your ability to let go. I'm hearing just the phrase, let go and let God. Okay, definitions can, of course, change. Let go, let the universe, divine surrender, whatever you like to say. But group number one, the dragons want you to know that they commend you for your faith and that they see that you've had some sort of either divine inspiration or kind of re-emergence of your faith recently, and they love to see this. Okay, we have the Four of Swords with the Justice card. We have the Five of Swords, Queen of Swords. We also have the Hang Plan, Five of Cups, and Four of Cups here with the Queen of Cups at the back of the deck. Okay, the dragons see how you have been striving for a very long time in order to continually either recycle or transmute or 
um, move past a certain energy. And they want to let you know that there's something here that you are releasing. And what you think you are releasing might not necessarily be what it is you think you're releasing. For example, you might be trying to move on past a situation, but maybe that situation is something that you're not supposed to be moving past. That's not to say you're staying stuck and not growing and healing. It's just meant to say that if you are noticing that you are experiencing so much coming in from your outside surroundings, for example, that's not saying that you take a step out of your aura and you leave your aura and grow a new one. That's not saying that if you hurt your foot, then you get a different foot and put it on your body. This is to say that kind of just like when the blood moves through our body so that it can help to heal, revitalize, and regenerate um, perhaps any any cuts or wounds or even torn muscles or injuries that we might have in our body, the blood flowing through it, it is the detoxifying process. And it is not the fact that whether or not scar tissue builds up, it is not whether or not we got hurt, whether or not it heals, because it heals, the body heals itself, the soul heals itself, and we also are living in the realm of illusion. So the dragons want to let you know here that with the five and the four of cups, there is something that you are actually meant to hold on to that you're trying to let go of. And that might be why you feel that you are in a deep, deep, deep release. We did have the fool card coming out in the beginning. And you might be trying to you might be trying to figure out why when you are releasing something, it comes right back. You hear the phrase, when you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's for you. Well, this is a part of the universe that loves you. This can be energetic, right? This can be, for um, for some of you, actually an injury. This can be, for some of you, um, a, I'm hearing the word grief, like something that would have caused grief in your life. And you might be trying to let go of the situation. And this might not be something that's meant to be let go of. It's something that's omnipresent. Say, for example, you lose a loved one, and so you are trying to move past the loss of this person. This doesn't have to be the situation, and of course, I say this compassionately and gently, but perhaps you are over trying to miss them. Maybe you are over trying to connect with them and think about those memories, and the dragons are saying in this situation, or whatever situation may be parallel to this energy, because remember, this is an energy reading, um, it is not that you are supposed to move past this person. It is that you are meant to move past the grief and find the beauty underneath it. Find the love underneath it. Find the beautiful memories and the expansion and that heart-centered gratitude that is underneath that. And you might be trying to let go of the situation when in fact the situation is meant to stay. It is perhaps your ability to... Like the energy, um, the energy field thing that came out in the beginning. The dragons want to let you know that Sometimes, if you have expanded your consciousness all the way somewhere and something happens that maybe draws it back in a little bit, your consciousness or your energy or you go into hermit mode or something like this, when it comes back in, honor it like the tides, trust that what goes in will come back out, what goes up goes down and so on and so forth. But also, with this Queen of Swords, it's saying that there is a boundary, there is a point where there is there is some sort of energy field or barrier or boundary or something around you. And that is what is moving. And eventually it will solidify. So it's worth the energy to make sure that whether it's bigger or smaller, your energy field, your situation, your connection to the situation, whether it's bigger or smaller, it's important that what is on the inside is purified, is clear, and has a root of love, light, and gratitude. Now, when we're talking about difficult situations, when we're talking about situations that have you in four of swords energy, that have you in five of swords, five of cups, four of cups energy. Now, this can be sometimes easier said than done, but this is where they'd like to remind you that your mind creates your reality. And yes, sometimes life life's at all of us. But the dragons want you to know first and foremost that your mind being healthy, happy, purified, your heart being healthy, happy, purified, that is the key to exactly what it is you've been seeking. And so this is why with cleanse your energy, this is perhaps allowing yourself to hold up a little bit stronger of a barrier between yourself and the outside world, not by removing yourself from it, but energetically allowing yourself to electrify your aura a little bit more. We are electromagnetic beings. This is why they want to keep reminding you your mind creates your reality. 
Your mind is an electric field. Your heart is, an, is a magnetic field, and this creates a torus shape. Now, of course, that is on the top half of your body, and we do have an entire system that goes up and around our entire bodies. And you can also expand this all the way through the entire galaxy, multi-universes as well, and you can shrink it all the way back to you. And this is how we feel that everything is connected. This is how people are so in touch with what's going on around them. Your energy field being so expansive, everyone's. That is part of the reason why it is such a tumultuous, sometimes, experience here on earth because we feel everyone's everything regardless of your level of consciousness of it and here we see someone who's highly conscious of it and they are almost fixating on one thing which is valid and it is their right to do so but we see that with this energy coming in you have closed out something again and so when it's coming up you are asking yourself well i i finished this lesson I understand the perspective. It's coming from love and light, so why won't I let it go? Why won't I let it go? Because now what you're trying to let go of is the love and light. Attached to this, you're trying to let go of the situation which has been transmuted into love and light. And so you are being asked, the dragons want to let you know that first and foremost, they are around you, they are protecting you, and they want to let you know that nothing that is shifty can come into your energy field at this time. They've got you. And they're showing me these cards accidentally on the back of the deck here. You have the chariot, the sun, the ace of wands, the ten of cups, the two of cups, and this queen of cups at the back of the deck they want you to know okay that they would like for you to reapproach the situation or take some time with this energy maybe if this is a loved one set up a little um altar for them or spend some time with them in prayer or perhaps with one of their belongings or just in um in memory of them if this is a situation that you've been in before allow yourself to go back and find the beauty, find the love underneath there, because you will find that perhaps the, the energy you're trying to let go of is not so much what is actually genuinely in your energy field at this time. It might be a little bit of muscle memory. Kind of like when you go outside and you feel all of these energies around you and you're used to having a certain threshold. This is mine, this is not, right? So we kind of see this theme in energy across your reading, manifesting in different ways. So, with this kind of threshold, where you say, okay, this is mine and this is not, when it becomes a little bit more magnetic because you become a little bit more sensitive, it's kind of the same thing. You honor and you look at what's really in there. Okay, this is where I am. This is my energy. Oh, okay, so my threshold, my threshold got more sensitive, so now this is what I'm strengthening. Okay, and when you come back and you look at this situation or these situations, whatever this is that this is pertaining to, you look at this and you say, oh, perhaps I am used to having the threshold here. Perhaps I am normalizing that I'm supposed to be feeling this. Maybe this used to hurt. Maybe this used to be sad. Maybe this used to be grief here. But when you actually look at what's there, you might be surprised that what you find is a pearl. It's a diamond. It is love and light and gratitude. And you might find that that grief is no longer there. You may just be holding that threshold because it's kind of in your imprint memory in your muscle memory, like when I'm trying to stand up straight in my ballet class and I'm accidentally shifting a little bit to the right. And I think that I'm standing up straight because it's in my muscle memory to perhaps shift my weight onto my right foot a little bit extra. And so I'll notice that there are small little things that are compensating for it, like um, perhaps my right hip then would be a little bit more or less flexible than my left. Um, my right shoulder would be a little bit more closed than my left. And my neck might not be as straight as it can be. So you'll notice that sending out this new purified ripple, because we see here someone that has done the work. We see here someone that is ready to move on. And so your definition of moving on is perhaps letting go of feeling the energy of those around you or letting go of a situation that you used to associate with grief or with difficulty or with confusion or with heartbreak. Now, with the Queen of Swords... Okay, this is not saying to not have self-respect and boundaries and honor your own truth. In fact, it's kind of quite the opposite. They're showing me a situation where you have perhaps a wall built up around the, the city that is your aura <laughs> or your heart or whatever the situation pertains to, okay? And say there's a big flood that's coming in and there's another stream of water that wants to come out. I don't know, they're showing me just this two energies that are kind of finding the center together, but there's a big wall in between and they're crashing up against the wall. When you let that wall down entirely, you might expect a bit of a flood 
But what's actually going to happen is a neutralizational process. And then everything can find where it naturally wants to go and flow when it finds its landing point. Then we can reestablish those boundaries from a clear, purified place. But they want to remind you, this is not just to release all of your boundaries, release all of your guard, let what happens, happens, que sera, sera, nothing like that, okay? They want you to know that they are here surrounding you. They are here protecting your fortress. They are here helping you maintain your core vibration while these things are moving and shifting around you in your energy field, in your heart. This is, perhaps you have healed, you've healed something, and you've released that energy. But when you reapproach this energy now, we're kind of looking at not that energy being there, but the imprint of it. And so just like your blood, when it needs to help detoxify something so that it can maybe deal with the little bits of scar tissue or the little bits of blood clots or the little bits of inflammation or what, what have we in your body, we have to have this process of smoothing over something. And as this happens, that is what then becomes that substance that starts to reform and regrow and revitalize whatever that was that was perhaps wounded in the first place but we have to allow that flow so for example if you are always compressing something say you hurt say you hurt your wrist or something and so you put a brace on it if you're always compressing it that can be amazing until it's not and so that's what we're seeing here when your wrist is no longer hurt at some point, you need to take the brace off. And yes, you will need to strengthen and stretch it. Perhaps you might feel a little bit of those tingles, but tingles also mean that there's something in your body or in your energy field. Notice that they're synchronistic. They're parallel to each other in your body or your energy field. That's where you'll feel those tingles. Because tingling means that there's something that's being processed. And so you can pull this out. You can take the energy and shoot it out your fingertips and you can bring it back in and allow it to be processed by your heart through the rest of your body. But this is just like the waves. They go in and out and they go out and they come back. And so you're being asked to take a look at this, this wall, this imprint of whatever was here. Take a look at the ways that you're a little bit more sensitive. Take a look at the ways that, in a good way. right? Take a, ways that you, look, take a look at the ways where you are perhaps more open to certain energies any energy at all. This can be spiritual. This can be emotional. This can be mental. This can be, I don't know, physical. Take a look at the ways that you are more open at this time and let that threshold kind of go in and out with the tides. Because you might be experiencing, for example, a full moon. And when there's a full moon, the waves are a little crazier. The tide is a little higher. The waves are taller. And so you might notice that your little buoy of your energetic threshold is kind of moving a little bit. But if it's anchored, it is going to be getting flopped all over the place. Instead of just finding that central place where it's going to land, when things wane out a little bit, literally. And so what we see here is the dragon's wanting to remind you that it's okay for you to let your guard down. That doesn't mean changing your boundaries, but sometimes it does mean letting yourself be open, open to what happens, knowing that you have boundaries, but not needing to have them on and activated all the time. Trusting that sometimes when you walk around and you are feeling more people's energy than usual, when you are picking up on more perhaps spiritual gifts and abilities than usual, this is not to say that you are, um, you are more powerful or you are weaker or you are more susceptible right now, or you are um, supposed to be hermiting yourself, or you're supposed to be putting yourself in the most crowded place you can find to deal with it. No, it's just saying to ebb and flow, trust that you have that support outside of you, and trust that this is part of the strengthening process. Again, if I can hold my leg at 90 degrees, but I'm more flexible than that, what the dragons are doing right now is they're saying, relax, relax your energy field, relax that leg, I'm supporting it, and I'm going to lift it above 90 degrees. I'm going to lift it to perhaps your max flexibility point. But let your leg be dead weight. Let your energy field be almost, let, let it be in their hands, literally. Because they'll say like, give me your leg, let it be dead weight. And then they'll lift it up because then you have relaxed relaxation and you can bring it up. And then they'll slowly, gently let go. They'll still be there as a support, as a spot. But as they slowly, gently let go, same with your energy field, you'll notice that you are activating in the correct places. Instead of clenching something, 
because you're afraid, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, it's going to hurt. What if I'm not strong enough there? Because you're already kind of getting your muscles used to that. And then that happens time and time again. And each time it gets a little easier. Each time your leg goes up a little bit higher the next time. Each time your energy field is a little more, it's a little more sensitive and a little stronger. So don't expect it to need to be one or the other. Don't expect the situation to need to be um, hot or cold. Sometimes the answer is just yes. And we might be looking at all of the reasons that happened in the past. We might be looking at all of the reasons that are happening around us. We might be looking at, but I'm trying to move forward. What is it that I want? Oh my gosh, but I feel this spiritually. Oh my gosh, how do I feel emotionally fulfilled? It doesn't matter. I'm in the right place at the right time. Anyway, YOLO, divine surrender. This is where they're commending your faith. And <laughs> with the Queen of Cups here, they want you to know that you have energies around you that you can rely and support on. You have energies around you when you feel like, hmm, well, this situation is coming back around and you, you, release, you release the thing that caused you the wound. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't come back. And when you approach it again, it doesn't mean it's going to wound you again. Okay? This is like saying, um, say, say you are doing a bunch of turns. Um, or you're doing a bunch of, say you're doing a cartwheel or whatever. And you fall and you hurt your ankle. Now, you will need time for your ankle to heal. That doesn't mean that you can't ever do a cartwheel again. And that doesn't mean you can't do the same type of cartwheel on the same floor with the same instructor in the same class on the same day of the week. So, you slipping and falling out of your cartwheel was the exception, not the rule. But that exception took a little bit of time to kind of temper out of your energy field. But don't forget that that's not the rule. And so that's why you're being called to let your guard down. Trust that you are divinely guided and protected and that you have this energy holding you holding your energy field holding that leg up for you so that you can get used to what it feels like so that you can put that in your muscle memory so that you can put that in your energetic memory and take your own time go with the flow but still be open and trust that you are not the only one that is out here putting effort in trust that maybe you see your max capacity but you have a little bit of an extra nudge. There's not no reason for that right now, okay? Trust yourself more than you think that you can. Trust what you're picking up on more than you think that you can. And don't scatter around trying to find the perfect solution and the checkmate move right now, because at this point in time, you're being asked to trust that while your leg is being lifted up for you, I'm just gonna go back to this analogy because it's home for me. When your leg is being lifted up an extra inch for you, it's not your job to clench your hip flexor or clench your hamstrings because you know what eventually they're going to let go. It is your job to let go and be dead weight so that you can really feel what it's like to be relaxed and have your leg there. To be relaxed and have that as part of your energy field. To be relaxed and let whatever spiritual things you're experiencing or whatever positive situation you're experiencing that is coming, blossoming from underneath whatever hurt you. Or energetically, you can let your energy regardless of what you feel coming in, you can let this newness normalize. You can let it set into your energy field. You can let this newness unfold and blossom. And you have a lot of help here doing this. They're helping you a lot. Primarily in your dreams, in your sleep state, and throughout your body. Okay? So that's all I have for you, group number one. That was your message from the dragons. I hope this helps shed love, light, and clarity on your situation. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you like this video. It helps me so very much, and I love what I do. I literally can't tell you enough how much I love connecting with you guys in this way and spreading the magic. <laughs> it's a little piece of my heart and soul to yours. So if you like this content, if you subscribe, it helps me to make more. No pressure, of course. <laughs> and... I hope you have an amazing, beautiful rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful realm, you beautiful, gorgeous emerald, you. And I will see you next time. Namaste. Hi there, group number two. Namaste, and welcome to your channeled message from the dragons. You selected the second group with cellular healing, as well as the apophyllite crystal. There seems to be an expansion of your consciousness that is occurring that the dragons wish to speak with you about. You might be noticing that you are unlocking or 
perhaps strengthening some spiritual, psychic gifts and abilities that you already have. Not in a way where you are perhaps getting too spun off into the illusion of astral energies and perceptions and visualizations, but where your consciousness is expanding to the to the point where the speed is almost causing you to unfold and grow out of any perhaps astral experience or vision around you. This has a lot to do with your perception and the perception of those around you. They want you to remember rule number one, never deny another's reality. Also, always continue expanding even though you see above and beyond it. For example, some of you might honor and see the energy of the dragons as a high vibrational sacred protector. Others might feel fear when tapping in with dragons. Others might believe that they are not there at all. And this might be because they have yet to experience the truth in the astral experience of them. It might also be because they have transcended astral truths, leaving them behind. That does not make the reality of dragons inconclusive or non-existent. But it does say that with cellular healing here, things are becoming more and more and more zoomed out. Life is becoming just as much of a dream as your dream state is, because that's really all this is. And so as you energetically experience your choice to be conscious right now, as you energetically experience your choice to be aware, awake, magical, as you remind yourself that everything around you is a choice, we see that your cells, your DNA is being activated, it's being purified, it's being ascended. For some of you, they are showing me um, a double helix DNA. They're showing me a 144 strand DNA. And then they're showing me a clear and open channel. And then they're showing me a channel expanding into space or is. So the dragons around you today, group number two, they want you to know that your placement in the material realm is no coincidence. It is no accident. And they also want you to know that the things that are placed around you in your material realm are no coincidence, no accident. Now, there is no such thing as an accident in the universe. There are only synchronicities that we are yet learning about. There are many thought groups about um, timelines, about being in the right space, about um, different ideas in order to help others ascend their consciousness to that point. But every single anchor must eventually be reeled back up so that the ship can carry on. And so the dragons that are around you <laughs> right now, group number two, they want to remind you that the way that you express yourself matters. It matters that it's authentic to you. It matters when it's authentic to you. And they want to remind you that it is important to be gentle with yourself. You may wake up fresh every single day. You may be aware that really nothing matters and everything is so important. Meaning that the way that you navigate this life to maintain the health of your spiritual being, of your consciousness, it is so very important. And also, this life is but a dream, therefore nothing really matters because it's not really real. And so we see this very expanded idea of duality that is kind of, as the Apophyllite helps us with, being transcended at the moment. You see my little desert rose crystal peeping out into the corner. It wants to say hi. This is a desert rose selenite. The dragons are wanting you to allow yourself to be who, what, when, where, why, and how you really truly are, regardless of the realm that is around you. They want to remind you that it is okay, it is normal, and it is natural for you to be who and what you naturally are. And this is not perhaps 
a little bit silly. It is not perhaps a little bit of any energy that could be considered leaning into one certain thing. This is the fullness of your knowledge. I'll say um, higher self for a very relative and anchor type energy for this. This is something that you have already evolved into and beyond. Because you are able to understand the, the cellular processes, you are able to understand your life or vice versa. Because you are able to identify exactly what is going on around you, exactly what the universe is saying to you, exactly what you are saying to yourself all of the time, you are continuing to expand. And as you continue to expand and you choose to remain in your vessel here on earth, you have more opportunity to become conscious of the other places that you are. And here we see people diving into past, present, future, parallel lifetimes, but every person, every dragon, every realm, every rock, every blade of grass, every particle of space is, in that sense, a past, present, future, parallel life. All is. And is is a concept of one which indicates a concept of two and a concept of none, which is something which indicates something beyond. You are aware of these truths or you are waking up to these truths. If you resonate with this vibration and your brain is thinking, breathe, accept it, and trust that this will unfold and it's important to be open and allow yourself to honor where you are in your consciousness. Do not ever push it beyond where you currently are. And do not ever stray so far from center that you begin to spin into certain stories. For example, over-identifying with a past life of yours or over-identifying with even this life of yours. Individuality is important and you're here for a reason, but it is also one of the most elusive and delusive things that exists. And with that being the case, it's important to remember that as you tap in, not with super conscious, not with Christ conscious, but with cosmic conscious consciousness, you are able to transcend even your astral body, even your higher self, even the idea of source because all just is. As you follow yourself on the ascension journey of source, as you follow yourself on the ascension journey of space, as you allow yourself to honor multi-universes, multi-reality multi within your own being, multi-dimensionality, not just there are many different places to yourself. You've min been many different places. You can hold many different vibrations, but that is your core. So the dragons around you, they feel very, I'm feeling air, space, crystalline for you and beyond, ethereal, very ether. And these are the energies around you because they want to remind you that regardless of where you are, you are never alone. Regardless of what realm or vibration or delusion or illusion or reality synonyms you are in, you are never alone. And with this being the case, all is you, you are all, there is no exception to that rule, and your ability to remember that is your ability to awaken others because what you're doing is awakening yourself. With the Apophyllite here, there's an indication that you are experiencing more spiritual ability than you have in the past or than perhaps those around you are familiar with or capable of or perhaps you are very spiritually inclined. Perhaps manifestation is quite simple for you. Perhaps you have, um, they're showing me um, city, 
um, which is like yogic superpowers that come along with divine perfection and perfection and divine are both relative terms. So is superpower. Okay, so take what I'm saying lightly. I'm merely using human earth words through my throat chakra to expand upon the energies that are being channeled through me. Okay, <laughs> so take this with relativity. This group is very conscious, very high vibrational. So let's see what what the dragons that are around you as your as your spirit guides, your cosmic guides, as the other bits and pieces of you that are floating around in the ether that want to give you a little I'm hearing pat on the back, okay? Let's see what messages they have for you. Please channel through my tarot cards, the correct message of energy, please channel through me, the correct interpretation of these energies, and please dragons for and around and supporting group number 2. Give and receive. Give and receive. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. The messages that are coming through you right now, the messages that are coming to you right now, are highly linked to your internal narrative. Okay, you're aware that you are your spirit guides. Your spirit guides are you. You are not a being that has a higher self that has spirit guides. Now, we do not deny other realities. We do not deny that that is not true. Or we do not deny that that is true. But we are past this. So because of this, you're able to identify that what you experience, what you say, is the guidance that you receive. What you give is what you receive. It is in giving that we receive. When you are lost and you need external help, then you are blinded and you receive external help. When you are aware, when you are conscious, when you are a co-creator or when you are a creator or when you just are, when you, when you is, <laughs> group number two, then this is where the guidance portion gets a little bit tricky because then what guidance is there to be had? This is more so listening to your internal guidance. This is grounding yourself into the reality, back into your human vessel or any past, present, future, parallel life or version of you anywhere. Your inner child, your future self, being your higher self, being the future version of you, talking to your past you, um, experiencing and creating your life the way that it is. We have, um, for lack of better terms, of course, your mind creates your reality, although we know it's not your mind. It is your consciousness. You know this, I know this, we get this, okay, but understand the term, the terminology that I use is the terminology that I have and have access to at this moment in time. So thank you for following the stream of vibration. Let us move on, okay. Oh, okay, they want me to go this way. We have the Knight of Cups, the Four of Coins, and the Three of Wands. We also have here coming out, oh, they want me to leave these for a moment and just identify that they are moving to me, the southeast direction. Okay, and they are pointing forward and to the right. Okay, so that is very significant in and of itself. And the fact that we don't see all of it right now and it's saved for later, that's also significant. Okay, so putting a pin in this energy. What we're focusing on right now, the dragons want you to know that as you move forward through love, as you allow yourself to expand and ascend and you continue to make the choice, four of coins, to remain in your body, remain in your vessel, allow yourself to honor the validation of your body to honor whatever it is that is experience that is your experience internally magnified externally honoring this this strength this powerhouse that is you we notice here that with the three of wands there is i'm hearing literally the world is your oyster the cosmos are your oyster and from here this is where we do not pull it in drag it down and hone it into the solar plexus or even the third eye, oh, right? This is not balance. This is where we draw it in and we look up at that light. This is where we draw it in, we pull it into our heart portal, and we open up that heart portal without traveling elsewhere. The reason for this is to maintain sovereignty and maintain growth without spiraling out into a storyline. Now, we can have experiences and pull it back to center and then ascend it. We can have experiences, pull it back to center, and then, and then ascend it. But when you have experiences and then you overvalidate that and then you explain it and then you continue walking that path, you are walking a path, but you are, and see, there's no correct or incorrect, but there is divine detour. So even the most divine experiences can become detours. And so this is kind of what the dragons want you to either be aware of or just understand right now, that you might be drawn towards creating your own life. And of course, this is what we do as humans. We are creator beings. But with cellular healing here, you're noticing... So I'm just combing through this energy a little bit. There's a little bit of stagnation here around um, four of coins. The physical body 
staying in your vessel, maybe keeping some of these truths to yourself, or um, honoring the way that you feel about it, or expressing the way that you feel about it, okay? We're seeing here that with the Three of Wands coming out, there is a bit of question about um, waiting for something that matches your energy so that you can go out into that experience, or waiting for the right divine inspiration so that you can then make that move, or perhaps um, knowing that you have autonomy over your life, so then waiting for something outside of you is quite literally non-existent. Although, we do not deny realities that are below this level of consciousness, because they are all valid, and they are all pure, and they are all perfect and intentional. And that is a part of you, too. So we kind of see this grander aspect that is duality, that is very loose, very fluffy, very spatial, and this is sifting out into, into is. Okay? So, they're showing me the 12 and fertility tonic, as well as the word on, on this Knight of Cups here. There's something here where your, your manifestation abilities, your creative abilities, your desire to, I'm just hearing, live your life right? Big and bold. You may feel as though you have more options in front of you or that you just instantly feel that things are easier. You might feel that you have um, more ability, more capability spiritually, physically, anyway, because you've closed out this Piscean chapter. Now, notice that the, the last lesson of Pisces, it's innocence and perpetuation, okay? So after this innocence, after this clearing of the cycles and going back to that divine purity, you then have perpetuation of this energy, and this is what you are sifting into. And this is why um, it's almost like you are being flipped on like a light switch. I'm hearing that song. Is that like Charlie Puth or something? You turn me on like a light switch. Na, 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 na. Okay. I don't really... Um, anyway, it's coming through, so I'll honor it. Move on. We have four coins indicating the heart chakra and grounding what is in the heart chakra. But we have when we go to tap in with the emotional, perhaps, pursuit of this, we want it to be rational. We might notice a little bit of over-rationalizing emotions or utilizing feelings as data coming through your body, coming through your spirit, because this is what this is, okay? So we have this energy here of your, your consciousness sifting through your emotional body. Okay, we know this. We have five layers of consciousness. We have your conscious body. We have your wisdom body, which is um, very Akashic, okay, if you will. We have the... Um, the knowledge body, which is your mind. Okay, we have the energetic body, which is your physical aura and your emotions. This is where the chakra system is. And then we have your body, good old fashioned skin. Okay, so as we see, we are kind of taking this level of consciousness, which is kind of where we are right now. And we're drawing this in. And as we draw this in, the wisdom body is just floating right through there. The mental body is just floating right through there. But when we come to the energy body, we see a little bit of emotions. We feel a little bit of density drawing these emotions and this energy into the body. And it wants to open and escape out the heart chakra. Okay. And here we see this um, wanting to ground, wanting to ground, wanting to ground, drawing this energy down from your heart chakra down into the solar plexus, the sacral and the root chakra. Okay. Wanting to do your life, wanting to take these beautiful conscious energies and perhaps manifest something from it. And what you are being encouraged to do by the dragons at this time is expand your heart portal without getting um, too far gone into these experiences, have them pull them back to center and then expand that. And as it expands, you'll notice that this heart chakra expands because you have a fully expanded system, right? From the crown all the way down to the heart. And then we notice that it physicalizes a little bit down below this. We, what we want you to do is expand your heart chakra and as you do this and come back to center, when it expands, it'll expand the channel underneath your heart chakra, which connects to your solar plexus. And a little bit after that, as this energy sifts through, it will then be expanding your solar plexus at the channel below it, the solar or the sacral chakra, the channel below that, the root chakra, etc., and then all the way down into the earth. And so instead of taking an energy and seeding it down, instead of taking this energy, honoring it, opening up your heart, instead of opening your heart and then having an having energy to send down. Okay, you're being asked to open your heart. You've opened your crown so much so that it's opened all of your, your chakras up until your heart. And I say this very relatively, okay? You've opened your consciousness so much so that your, your wisdom, your knowledge, everything is flowing. Your expression is flowing. Your heart is flowing. Everything is open. And so as we ground this into the physical body, as we ground this into the food that you eat, into the habits of your life, into what you are doing with your life, in the, the grounded sense, you're being asked to allow this conscious energy that has expanded your heart by sifting through these to continue expanding, but maybe draw the energy towards your heart a little bit and expand that out even more, which will expand the bottom part of the sphere 
of your aura, the bottom part of the sphere of your Taurus, of your electromagnetic physical being. Honoring that this is not a physical realm. This is an energetic realm where the energies are just perhaps very tightly woven. Okay? And we understand this conceptually, but this is where we're being given. What you put out there is what you get back. So this is where you're being called at this time not to spiral out, not to walk too far into stories, not to walk too far into certain truths or realities and merely let everything be where it is. Let everything be is. Because it is still expanding. That is the most expensive thing you can do. And at the same time, yes, you are a creator, but the more that you weave your own thing, the more you are creating yet another reality that will lay on top of the one that you're on, and then we have more friction. We have more energy to sift through, either now or later or wherever, whenever you are. This seems like an energy that is outside of time and space. You feel like you do not um, really submit anymore to time and space. You feel very highly conscious, or at least this energy that's coming through is. So the dragons would like for you to pay attention to the lymph nodes um, on like around your armpits and your shoulders there. Okay, drink a little bit more water. Lymph nodes in the neck are coming up a little bit too. Um, this is a lot of heart activation. Not because your heart chakra was closed is what they're saying, but because um, there's this emotional connection to being in your body that you might be dealing with. Okay, so do not confuse this with energies of your sacral chakra. Okay. Allow this divine bliss, the divine consciousness, not just the not just the perfection, not just the bliss, but beyond that, the is, is. Allow that to be what you come back to center towards, okay? This is not sacral. However, this is a, a symptom, a side effect of divine bliss, divine perfection, which does get sublimated. And so beyond that, we're kind of experiencing this um, perhaps hypersensation. We're experiencing this... Um, this desire to create, this desire to, oh my gosh, I'm so excited, I want to do something with this, oh my gosh, I have this ability, so what can I do with it, oh my gosh, I have to, mm. hone it back in, is, okay, we have four and three, which is coming back down energies, we have one, two, four, three, okay, so what we see is that you used to be holding back about your possibility for the future, but now with this organization of cards, what we're seeing now is that you are taking a step before you're planning your future to make sure that you're pulling it back to center, which is beautiful. And as we do this, we're noticing that you're being called to expand your heart towards yourself. And this is where you expand your heart, pull it back to center, and then send it down. Okay, so instead of sending it down, you're being asked to just continue expanding your heart. Stay in that part of the cycle, that part of the process, and let that be what opens up the lower energy channels. Okay, not to say they are closed, not to say they are blocked, but that they are opening, they are evolving, they are expanding, just like you are, just like your consciousness is, just like source itself is. Just like everything, the universe, every single bit is always infinitely expanding. Allow this to be the case. Now, to these cards that fell out, okay, you are, you are learning and releasing at the same time. It's like you learn something new, and then you release the... Um, the story that goes along with it, right? We have this, um, oh, you're expanding into this reality. Oh, but we're not submitting to realities anymore, okay? We have this, um, oh, this energy exists and I can feel it and it's true and honor. Oh, we've transcended it already, okay? This is this, um, this southeast energy that we have here, but it's also, for you, it's also kind of northeast, okay? So we're moving still in this direction. We're moving still in this direction and we're growing, which is beautiful and they're showing me the apophyllite crystal with cellular healing um and then they're showing me again that vision i got in the beginning they're showing me a double helix they're showing me yes we have um eight strand 12 strand 24 strand 36 strand they're showing me like all the way up to 144 um 144 strand dna opening up into a clear complete channel and then it's a channel oh it's expanding infinitely and it's no longer a channel and it is just space but we have this energy and it's walking around in a human body oh but it's also all of the plants on earth and it's also every single universe that is outside of ours and it's aware of itself so what do we do with this energy what do we do with this energy on this planet in this life in this reality well we're not really living a reality we're barely in this life so here we have these next cards and by barely in this life i don't mean that we are ungrounded it's literally the opposite <laughs> you understand or you will okay we have the seven of wands the temperance the hierophant the nine of wands and the nine of swords okay we have 99 here okay when you are conscious of every single grain of soil, that is being grounded, okay? But it's also very spiritual. There's a point where you can ground yourself so much that it becomes spiritual. There's a point where you can ascend spiritually so much that it becomes grounded, okay? And it, it is this stepping into a reality, pulling it back to center. That is exactly what it is. Um, I 
The dragons around you want you to know, okay, that they see that you've been looking for a place to put this energy or something to manifest with this energy or there are some goals that you've had when it comes to your physical grounded life, okay? You are, you're showing up and you're doing the work. And so there's this energy of, so, hello, like, when will something, when will, when will what I want manifest? Um, and then they want to point you back gently to this, um, what you believe is what comes true, okay? But also pull it back to center. So they want to make sure that the thing that you're manifesting is not um, in a reality and then down a path a couple steps. They want to make sure that it's back to center. Otherwise, you need to walk down that path in order to get it. And they're not saying, okay, that's not your clue. That's not your hint to go find that doorway again and then run past it. That's your, it's your job to see that you've expended beyond that and honor that you can embrace that within your energy field without needing to shrink, open that door and go down that path because we're here now. So we don't have to take a particle of ourselves and go through this, this pathway anymore. It's this expanding and then there's no more door. There's no more path. And then it just is and it's within your energy field and it's already there. So that might be alchemically what you're looking for here. Um, the dragons do want to let you know okay, that they're guiding you a lot. You have a lot of angels around you, okay? There are a lot of wings, a lot of wings around you right now, okay? You might notice a lot of birds, a lot of angels, a lot of dragons, a lot of fairies, okay? There's, there are a lot of wings around you right now. Wing energy is coming up strongly, okay? And we do have this situation here that's coming up, okay? We have this nine of wands, nine of swords, three of wands, and 99 indicates the future, three of wands indicates the future, and here we have what I like to call the baby wheel, six of coins. We notice a change towards what it is that you want, what it is that you perceive. There's almost this energy that you are expanding so quickly that the moment that you get to decide what it is that you want, you visualize, you want to manifest something, it changes almost instantaneously. And then from that vantage point, you might want something else, you might perceive something else, you might see your future, your life in another way, and then almost instantaneously, again, it evolves. Energy is always shifting and moving and changing. It's not supposed to be stuck. But here we are in this physical reality where everything is so tightly woven together that we see quite the opposite. And so you're being asked to use this as your resource. Now, you can live the life that you desire, but this is exactly why you're also being called. When you experience all these energies, when you have this truth, just continue to look up. Okay, and when it comes back into your body, Find it in your heart chakra and open it and expand it all the way, spherically. Because you have, you have this fear going on. You have your heart portal open. And when it comes to grounding the energy, you're trying to remember, take it and ground it. But there's nothing that you can take. Everything is moving and shifting and changing and you've already evolved past that. So what you're doing now is allowing yourself to become the portal so much so that you evolve out of becoming the portal and just acknowledging that things shift and move and change and that everything is. And that is one of the most grounded truths that you can ever experience in your conscious vessel. There's this energy of um, perhaps the rib cage coming out here, a little bit of posture. Okay, they wanna show, um, they wanna show you like that those lymph nodes. They really want you to pay attention to your lymph nodes at this time, maybe some lymphatic drainage. Okay, is going on maybe a little bit of um, massage work or something okay the dragons around you are really wanting you to reach higher heights when it comes to your consciousness and of course high is a relative term heights are a relative term dragons is a relative term you understand what we're saying but as you do this they want you not to fear they want you not to worry about being ungrounded they want you to remind yourself that the more spiritual you get, the more grounded you are. The more grounded you can get, the more spiritual you are. And anything that is stuck or has ventured down a path a little too much is kind of on a detour, on its way back to ascension or on its way back to coming grounded or on its way back to center. So they don't want you to worry too much about the ongoings because rem remember that everything that you see that is not on center, everything that you see that is ungrounded or everything that you perceive as being not high enough vibrational these are all parts of you too these are all conscious parts of you too and it's not your job to energetically manhandle your way through the universe but it is your way to trust that the way that you have set everything up is the way that it's meant to be and it just is it's already beyond perfect it is and so in this they want you to continue focusing on your spiritual 
priorities, continue to grow, continue to evolve, and worry less about the physical minutia of this life, because you'll find that the things that you want or the things that you will experience will be better than what you can, with your grounded energy and your physical brain, think up or imagine or create or kind of manifest. Because as the universe is infinitely expanding, so is your perception of what it is that you desire. So is your perception of what it is that's possible. So is your perception of your consciousness. So does the releasal of your own perception. So while you're in this energy, the dragons want to remind you that this is why everything is perfect. This is why people learn how to manifest so that they can get to this point of consciousness. This point of consciousness is not meant to help you manifest something new. It's meant to help you understand why you've already manifested the things that are here. Yes, we are co-creators, but you are in a place where you are meant to experience yourself. And you remember being outside of this. You are currently outside of this. So pay a little less attention to situations, to stories, to um, realities, to time, to space. And a little more towards... Very quite simply, they're just saying, Om. And they're showing me a very strong green and blue kind of spacey crystalline light that's kind of going whoosh, this way. And so know that you are being supported in your endeavors. Know that you are being supported in your expansion of consciousness and that your acclimation to your physical life is a normal and natural process that you are also still evolving through. That's normal, it's healthy. And remember that your perception of the way that you're interacting with the world and the way the world interacts back, remember, we're releasing perception at all. It's already perfect the way it is. Also, your mind creates your reality and you're at a place where you're releasing perception. So we're going to leave you there today because that's quite a big idea. This energy was very high vibrational, very conscious. So I hope that this helped tune you up a little bit if this felt a little bit jumbled. And if you understood what I'm saying, thank you for being here. <laughs> um, this was definitely channeled. <laughs> so that's all I have for you, group two. I hope this helped shed love, light, and clarity on your situation. As always, I'm sending you all my love, light, and gratitude. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful magical realm if you like this video and you want to hear more messages like this please like comment and subscribe to my channel it does help me out quite a bit and it also helps other people find messages like this when they might need them so help give my channel a nudge help give me a little hug if you don't mind no pressure at all and again thank you for being here i'm so extraordinarily grateful for you you are very very loved all of the time, and I will see you next time. Namaste. Hi there, group number three. Namaste, and welcome to your reading, where I'm channeling a message to you from the dragons around you. You selected group number three with the green astrological transits card and this celestite geode. The first thing that I'm getting here is with the transits and the celestite, this seems like you are Stepping into a celestial portal of some type, you might be looking at different aspects of your life a little bit differently. You might be thinking a little bit differently, or you might be noticing that some of these transits are having you in like a stop and go energy. The dragons want to let you know, group number three, that you are being called to express some of the things that are in your heart right now because they're helping to Awaken the consciousness of all that is around you. The dragons want to let you know that you have a very heavenly or angelic or calming, peaceful energy to you at this time. Almost like an earth angel, a walking spirit guide, or just somebody very encouraging, supporting, and loving. And your place on this earth is to be a nurturer. While it's not your job to nurture everything and everyone all of the time, it is a large part of who you are, why you're here, and what your role is intended to be. And part of the imprint and impact you are meant to leave while you're here. Now, of course, 
you honor yourself and the other parts of your life path while you're here. But you might notice that you are stepping through a gateway or through a portal where you're being encouraged to perhaps interact a little bit more and also pull back and honor yourself a little bit more. They're showing me uh, the tide with a full moon. The waves are bigger, but also when the tide recedes, it pulls back even further too. The high tide is the highest, and because the waves are the largest, because the impact is the largest, it pulls back even harder. So where you may have been, um, they're showing me like, here's one for you, here's one for me, here's one for you, here's one for me. There's kind of this energy of, here's a huge giant wave for you, and now here's a huge giant wave for me. <laughs> and so the dragons, group number three, they want to let you know that a lot of your intuition at this point is coming to the forefront, and so is a lot of the love that is in your heart. You're being seen as one of a kind, as an absolute miracle worker, and I don't know why this message is coming through for you, group three, but I have a feeling that you do. The dragons want you to know that you are being prepared for something significant to occur in your life, and they're drawing my attention back to this portal again. There seems to be either a pivotal moment in your life, some sort of faded event. I'm also hearing the phrase canon event. There can also be something where if you were to check the transits, you might be able to find it, or you might have recently experienced some sort of shift. And I'm seeing 333 everywhere, and you did select group three. So there's something here that is activating really strongly. It is moving, it is ascending, it is solidifying, and it is expressing itself in, in the heavenly realms. And your experience, you expressing your experience through your heart, the way that it makes you feel, the way that you perceive things, the way that you experience your life, it is supposed to help you become more mobile in your life in ways that you want to be, and it'll help you make bigger strides like the waves in your life as well. There is an indication here that you are being called to sit down, rest, stop, when you feel called to sit down, rest, and stop. But you're also, because of this, being encouraged to utilize that energy almost as an investment for the moments where you have to get up and go, maybe spur of the moment, to have a conversation, welcome someone in your home, help somebody out, or do something for yourself, perhaps spur of the moment. Your self-care is integral at this time because you're going to be making a bigger impact. Also, you're going to be making an in a bigger impact because you are taking better care of yourself. So here we see this larger waves, higher tide, and also a larger receding of your energy as well. And with this, it's kind of drawing this grand, this grand connection of energies that are almost colliding in a beautiful sense, which is creating a portal of that in-between energy, finding what is that common ground now? What is that center point now? Because it might be, they're showing me just the same back and forth motion here. That axis point, that central point is the same. And so now as, as things increase and then they decrease as they are given to others and they're pulled back for you, that central point remains the same, but the autonomy with which you maintain that central point grows and expands. I'm going to get into your tarot now, and I want to really dive into these messages that the dragons have for you, Group 3. There's something about your expression and your heavenly nature that's really coming up here. Messages, please, to Group Number 3 from the dragons that are around them right now. Now, they want you to continue focusing on yourself. And as you do this, you shine a little brighter. And when you shine a little brighter, you're also in a little better mood because you're taking better care of yourself. And when you're in a little better mood, it opens up your heart and allows you to give more to others. You'll notice that you have more time. You'll notice that you have more space. And again, with the astrological transits here, you are shining bright like a star and you seem to feel like everyone's lucky transit. Now, this is interesting. and I've never heard anyone say anything like this before, but I'm hearing someone say, like, oh, what's your rising sign? And someone's like, oh, I'm a group three rising, where you shine so brightly that you almost are in a league of your own. And this can be sure astrologically, but it's it's interesting. I've never really heard anyone say anything like that before. Kind of like um, Ophiuchus, <laughs> except it's you, group three. You are like a, a whole separate energy. 
Now we have the nine of coins coming out for you. Messages please from the dragons to group number three and the emperor. Okay, you're definitely standing in your power right now. And I've been seeing 111 quite a bit since I was preparing for your reading and again right now. So there's something here where you seem to be a walking activation for people in your life. Now this might be because of your strong energy. We also have the four of wands. Okay. The dragons want you to know that there are many energies around you, 44, that see you as a guide, they see you as a teacher. And we have the 10 of coins here. Beautiful cards, by the way, at the back of the deck, page of wands. Many people around you want to learn from you. Just like there are different deacons of each house or astrological sign, there seem to be different deacons of you, different layers with which people can get to know you. And there's kind of this energy of once someone gets beneath the surface, now they are opening up to a different level of you. You seem to open up to people in layers. And it seems to be you honoring yourself that allows you to do this for people. And it seems that you opening up in this way is what is bringing you success. And it's also what's drawing people towards you. Now, it's interesting that this is your message coming out from the dragons, but um, I don't make the cards. I just read them. Well, sometimes I do, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Let's see. Hmm. The dragons want you to know that you... You opening up, you being vulnerable, you taking time for yourself, you almost acting like selfish in a sense. Um, not, not in a negative way, but um, you honoring yourself is going to be what leads you towards success. You putting your home life first is going to be what helps you in business. You putting yourself first is going to be what helps you connect with others and so on and so forth. There seems to be this distinct tie here between your energy, making sure that, oh, I see, I understand. Because your energy is so unique, because your energy is so um, special, it is so different. It is important that it gets maintained and sustained and almost tidied off so that it maintains this individual nature. It maintains its unique spark. So here we have this time where you are kind of becoming more individualized and then coming out and sharing that with the world and it's not the version of you after you have given a bunch of your energy it is not the version of you after you've been in a bunch of surroundings and you kind of are wearing these other energies but it's actually your individual unique nature so we see here with your unique nature taking a little bit of an investment of your energy and drawing spiritual awareness to it, drawing some self-fulfillment out of this you time internally in your internal world. We see you going through transformations that end up bringing you empowerment. And from this, we see this drawing you forward into the life that you desire, your happy home life, your four of wands energy, whatever that might mean for you. We see you moving forward towards the direction of your dreams, of your, your desires personally. And we see this 10 of cups, oh, 10 of coins, my bad, with the six of wands which is beautiful, which is physical, material, happiness, fulfillment, completion of cycles. We see success. We see um, perhaps feeling like you are the, the light of your own life, for example. And with this, the dragons want you to know that we have the three of coins at the back of the deck with the celestite crystal, which is kind of indicating here that your angelic nature, you treating yourself like an angel, is the thing that is going to help you teamwork with others. And this is also going to be what draws you around the crowd that you're meant to be in. So with the King of, Sword, King of Swords underneath this with the Strength card, you might notice that you have perhaps lived a life where you've needed to assert certain boundaries. You've needed to speak up for yourself. You've needed to um, draw sharp lines in the sand, so to speak. And this is so that you can soften into that version of you. So that when you soften into yourself and you honor that, that is non-debatable. You pull back into yourself, you're able to grow, you soften, and then you blossom, and then you're able to take this out into the world, make a difference, help other people out, and utilize your own individual unique energy. And being so solidified in who, what, when, where, why, and how you are, it's able to help draw likeness to others who have not done that, helping others to find their own unique individual nature helping others to stand in their own power because they're around energies that are dedicated to doing so. Just like how they say, if you are in the room with four millionaires, you will be the fifth. If you are in the room with four addicts, you will become the fifth. 
if you are surrounded by you <laughs> and your angels and spirits and guides and ancestors, you will become you and an angel, a spirit, a guide, an ancestor. And so with this energy, with this beautiful star powered energy, the dragons would like for you to almost remind yourself to save those bits and pieces for yourself, but not to save them for the end. They want you to almost eat the dessert first in that sense. They want you to put yourself first. And you might feel like you're already doing this. You might already be on a self-love, self-care journey. The dragons want to remind you that you are meant to, with the emperor and the death, I'm hearing systemic change. You are meant to make some sort of difference here. This might be by loving people in ways they've never been loved before. This might be in making huge changes to the system on a large scale. And it can just be in little ways, like being kind to children or smiling at people when you cross the street. And we see that you are meant to help transform the world. You're supposed to have some sort of an impact while you are here. And this has a lot to do with your own movement towards your own happiness and also that balance between four and seven, your home life and the connections in your life. You moving forward and honoring those connections, you finding that balance within yourself, you having a daily routine that suits you and your home life and provides more than enough for yourself. And from there, your overflowing cup can then fill, fill the cups of others as well without it taking from yours. And we all know this theoretically, but this seems to be part of your life path. The dragons would like for you to know, group number three, that when it comes to your ability to guide or teach people, you are certainly a master. You have already mastered perhaps a craft, mastered teaching, mastered showing people, guiding people. Maybe you're an astrologer, maybe you love crystals, maybe you are a school teacher. Whatever you do, you do it very well. And you seem to have some sort of esteem in your field or in your family or in your friend group or whatever this is. You seem to be the go-to person for something. And here, we see that everyone would love to have a little tiny bit and piece of your energy. And we also see that you feel inclined to give those little bits and pieces of your energy. You feel spiritually called towards this, but not until you are fine and dandy and comfortable and happy and taken care of yourself, which is where we notice, like we saw in the beginning, the tide ebbing, ebbing and flowing, pulling really far back so that it can go even up further onto the shore. We see your energy pulling and receding so much into yourself that the wave becomes larger and takes up covering more of the earth. And the little bits and pieces of magic from the ocean that are left then on the sand when you recede, those are little bits and pieces of your energy. Those are little traces of you that can be picked up and collected and admired. So they want you not to be afraid to be hands off when you need that time for yourself. Just like the ocean leaves seashells on the shore, when it pulls back, when you pull back, remember that you have left little jewels and gems and bits and pieces of particles and energies and love everywhere that you've already been. So they don't want you to overextend yourself. They want you to remind yourself that if you feel yourself ebbing and flowing with the moon, honor those energy patterns. If you feel like you are not meant to move right now, don't. If you feel like you need to stand up and take charge and do something about something, go ahead. And also honor your own energy levels. Trust that they ebb and flow. And trust that you know what's best for yourself. If you want to give to everyone and you're a little bit tired, it doesn't have to be a no. It can be a maybe later. Maybe it is a no, but allow that to be the case if and when it is. We see here that a large part of your path is perhaps humanitarian, perhaps very friendly, perhaps very sociable, perhaps involving a lot of other people, and perhaps a vigilant daily routine. And this is why it is so important that you prioritize yourself and you make it a habit. Now I'm hearing um, habits aren't for everyone. And that may or may not be true. That is a subjective phrase. But what we see here is that when it comes to habits with others, do not tie yourself to needing to have habits when it comes to taking care of others, providing for others, but make sure that you have habits when it comes to taking care of and providing for yourself. Because with this energy, if you are taken care of and on a whim, you go help someone. If on a whim, you have a phone call with your friend for an hour. If on a whim, you go out on a mission trip and you help volunteer somewhere. Then you are taken care of. And you are able to leave the middle of the ocean and break on the shore and make a beautiful impact and leave those seashells when you do recede back. 
So don't feel bad when you recede back. Remind yourself how much you give. And it's okay that there's an ebb and flow. You don't have to be 100% consistent all the time. If you were, well, so would the moon. The moon wouldn't wax and wane. The tides wouldn't ebb and flow. Everything is cyclical, and it's supposed to be that way. Remind yourself that consistency is helpful, and the thing that should be the most consistent in your life group number three is your ability to honor yourself. Your ability to perhaps take care of your skin or your spiritual hygiene, make sure that you have enough money in your bank account, perhaps make sure that you are happy, you are fulfilled, you are feeling supported and loved and protected and guided and encouraged by the universe, by yourself, by those around you, by your surroundings, everything. Because this is integral to, yes, you taking care of yourself, to you having the biggest impact in the world, to you standing in your power, changing your life and the lives of others, but also to you giving back as well. And we kind of see this indication here that the more that you have, the more that you give, but the more selfish that you are, the more that you can, the more that you are successful. And this seems to be in your energy. And I don't mean selfish in a bad way, but they almost want me to say it to numb you to that word, to perhaps any negative connotations you might have towards it. The dragons don't apologize for being dragons and they don't care if people believe in them. The sun doesn't care if people think it's good or bad or ugly. It provides life and it doesn't apologize. Some days it's there, some days it's not. And no one complaining that they wish the sun was out makes the sun come out. Clouds do what clouds do. Rain does what rain does. And the sun, it doesn't shine at night. No, not everywhere, not all the time. Some places it does, but everywhere's a little different. The sun's just doing its thing. And it's not really the sun that's changing and ebbing and flowing. Not too much anyway. So with that being the case, trust that your cycles and the perception of your cycles are allowed to be two different things. And know that Yes, you are here to make an impact while you're here. But the dragons want to let you know that you being empowered, you standing in your power, you going there, you getting perhaps a little bolder. You standing up for yourself, whether that means going out and doing something in the world, or that means staying in bed and taking a nap, <laughs> being here or being there or doing something or not doing anything at all. Your physical, energetic, spiritual, mental, emotional requirements are the closest thing that you can possibly find to your guidance, your light on your life path any more than you can find it outside of you. So trust that your personal requirements through all of its seasons, through all of its cycles, through all of its changes are intentional and meant to be honored or else they would not be there. You are meant to make great strides in this life. In fact, we see kind of this well, page of coins to the king of wands, big energy. We see death, kind of this, this transmutation of energy and chariot, fast movement, six of wands, success. We see this exponential growth here for you, for your life. And the dragons want to let you know that you're right, your life is changing. If you're feeling like something big is coming and something even bigger is coming after that and then something even yet larger than that is coming at the very end, you're correct. And they do want to remind you that you are fierce. In some way, you are a force to be reckoned with. And in order to be a force to be reckoned with, you got to know how to take a nap. You got to know how to have some maybe money in the bank. You got to know how to meditate. You got to know how to move forward through situations. And being versatile, like you are, or like you're being called to, will be what gives you that exponential consistency, not the focus on your consistency. Rather, the focus on your cycles is exactly what will lead you to that consistency because the one thing that never changes is the fact that everything's always shifting, moving, and changing. So that is the message that the dragons want to leave with you today, group three. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this helps shed love, light, and clarity on your situation. As always, I'm sending you all my love, light, and gratitude, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, week, month, year, and incarnation in this beautiful, miraculous realm. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe as it helps me out a lot and it helps other people find the messages that are meant for them. I'm so grateful that you were here. Thank you for allowing me to read your energy today and to connect you with the dragons. Thank you to the dragons and your, all, all of our angel spirits, guides, and ancestors for being here with us today. As always, I love you and I will see you next time. Namaste.